And uh, board, thanks for having me back, and thank you for bringing me back home to where I belong. Um, Peter took the time to speak to my daughter, who is enrolled in uh, Life West in October. So I'm excited. She's a, she's a New Beginnings kid, and she grew up here breaking boards and walking on fire and listening to everybody. And you guys must have touched her in a really great way. So thank you. Um, <clears throat> mission of chiropractic is to move the world, which will be done when it becomes known and appreciated by the masses for its true value. For that to occur, chiropractors have to grasp on that too. If you're not out to change the world, your whole life is a waste of time. Reggie was right on. Now, our whole profession was born out of a question. So it just makes sense that when we educate our patients, we always ask great questions, because we'll get great answers. DD had this question burning in his mind for years before he was delivered the answer. And one question was always uppermost in my mind in my search for the cause of disease. I desired to know why one person was ailing and his associate eating at the same table, working at the same tabletop, at the same bench was not. He wanted to know why. And he kept searching, and he kept searching. And you know how things change in time? Well, <clears throat> I looked up. I got a hold of a 1913 Webster's Dictionary. And I wanted to know what he actually was looking at. And their number one definition in the time that DD was forming was lack of ease. That was the definition known commonly to all men, not just chiropractors. But somewhere along the line, that got put on the shelf, and it changed. But it still had major repercussions as to how our systems were developed. It says, a lack of ease, uneasiness, trouble, disquiet. So all that night, they passed in great disease an uneasiness, a lack of ease. That's what it used to be known to everybody. Wouldn't it be nice if we could bring that back? <laughs> so conflicts clarify. So always running around thinking, and <clears throat> where did D.D. Palmer get the word chiropractic from? Well, D.D. had a spiritual intellect by the name of Jim Atkinson. He was his guide, his spiritual guide. And Jim had told him that chiropractic, as D.D. was forming it, dates all the way back to the Greeks. The reason that makes what they did and what we did different was how we defined it. But he went to Sam Weed and he said, listen, I want you to go get the Greek words for what we're trying to do, because we got to name it. So in 1896, he says, Reverend Sam Weed, at my request, selected two Greek words. And that was picked for a reason, care and practice, meaning that when combined, done by hand, from which I coined the word chiropractic. So I like to always wonder why. It brings me to a different place. So I started looking at care. And one of the forms of care is chiro which is what Didi took and brought the first part. And praxis is the practice of, an exercise. But doing action and to do practice. And the other one, care, means just hand. But I wondered what it, where tick and tor came from. So tick, back to the Greeks, meant to place. And Somewhere along the line in Middle English, it was tech, which meant to pat. And the Middle High German, was it was zik, which is a light push, which I thought was pretty cool. So I wanted to share that with you. The tour, by definition, is that Rocky Mountain High, 
way up on top of the Rocky Mountains, that's what a tour is. So I like that because I want us to be on a solid ground on top of everything else. And if we stand there as a profession, we're doing awesome stuff. And that's what it was named after. So tour, tick, it's pretty cool. Something fun, did you ever like that one? That's fun, right? Something different. Behind every success is one who has a better vision of service. I also believe that everything that really ever needed to be said in chiropractic has already been said. We just have to get to a point where we really understand what they're saying. And I'm always working on it, just like everybody else. So the major premise of universal intelligence is in all matter and continually gives to all its properties and actions, thus maintaining it in its existence. That chiropractic meaning of life, which is the second of the 33 principles, is the expression of this intelligence through matter. And I want to take the word matter and break it down. Managing a tremendous truth evokes a revolution, resolution. It makes you come to an understanding. Now, your matter, our matter, we've been given certain properties to attain certain actions that will allow us to maintain our existence. You've been given chiropractic, right? If you don't act, how can we maintain? That's our major premise. You have certain properties and actions, thus maintaining it in existence. If we don't act, we can't maintain who we are. As a profession, as a person, we don't, we don't actually honor what we've been given. So when that baby is coughing and you're online getting your food at the health food store, hopefully, you got to act and say, hey, who's your chiropractor? Is that talking symptoms? I don't know, but I know that I'm standing there and there's dysfunction in front of me. And if I have the, been given these certain pieces of matter that make up who I am and I don't act, then I'm not going to maintain. You're a new doctor? I am. Welcome. Thank you. Go to lunch on me tomorrow. You're welcome. So matter. We got to matter. We got to manage. It's a tremendous truth that we have. We have to evoke a resolution within yourself. Not for anybody else, but just to maintain who you are. D.D. Palmer was the discoverer of chiropractic. His son, B.J., was a developer. He developed it into a profession for, for us. They've already done all the hard work. They had to figure it out. They had to put it together. They had to name it. They had to bring it to the world. They already did it. Their son turned it, and turned it into an educational system so they could bring it and that the government could give them loans so they could fund it. He did a great job, too. Not well known, though. And you, you have the most important job of anybody that ever walked before you. You have to deliver it. It's not yours to redefine. It doesn't even belong to you. You just have to take it. This is chiropractic. Put it in your toolbox. That's simple. Keep it simple. You never know how far reaching something you may think, say, or do today will affect the lives of millions tomorrow. You just don't know. We have to resonate from above, down, inside, out. BJ was into radio. He had the first radio station west of the Mississippi, first TV station west of the Mississippi in the history of the United States. He was a brilliant man. But radio and BJ always made sense to me because he resonated from above, down, inside, out. It was just a natural thing. Did you agree? Yeah. OK. <laughs> Make your decision for what is right, not expedient and wash your mind of all compromise. Simplify, do not mystify. Keep it simple. Because at the end of the day, subluxations interfere mainly with people's life expression. Right? What is a service when you break down? Where did serve, the word service come from? Go all the way back to Latin. It means slave.
it also, when you read what the definition is, it's to perform routine maintenance or repair or work on a vehicle, a machine. The vehicles that stop by your office need your care. <laughs> Get to work. <laughs> Because supplying an education, rendering value to innate's complete expression is a really important thing to do. Now, <clears throat> every day we fight this battle. When I was in school, they taught me that C stood for chiropractic, so I didn't mind getting a C in class. I was okay <laughs> with that. But the C, if we jumble up and mess up our sacred trust, we do it out of fear. Fear of not being accepted, fear of not doing or being accepted for who we are, what we have to offer. I don't know why, but if you wanted to be accepted, you picked the wrong profession. <laughs> it's very easy to become scared. Now, if we allow the removal of our education, of our principle, if we chop off the education, all we have left is a scar on our profession. Don't be afraid of nothing. What you have inside you, what you have to deliver, is something that people need. People want. All you have to do is deliver it. You can do it. Don't ever be afraid. Don't be afraid to walk up and ask that mom, hey, Who's your chiropractor? Don't be afraid to say, who's the closest person to you in your life? You. Me. <laughs> Pick somebody else. <laughs> My son. Your son. Which one? Anthony. You and Anthony. Okay, she has a son, Ivan, too. Wonderful kids. So, you and Anthony have a relationship based on a lot of things, love, respect, but communication is the most important part of that relationship, right? And if there's a miscommunication in your relationship, does your relationship suffer? Yeah. And at that point, if I gave you drugs, would you feel better? Yeah. Quite possibly, you might. <laughs> what? But would it fix the problem? No. Okay. So if your brain cells and your tissue cells have a relationship based on communication, and there's interference on that communication, and we gave you drugs to feel better, would it fix anything? No. So if you had something presented to you that would help your body reconnect tissue cell and brain cell, B, C, to T, C, do you think that might help you in the future? Not only now, but going forward? Something you're interested in? Me too. <laughs> Keep it simple. If you ask the right questions, you're going to get the right answers. Don't be scared. Don't drop your education. Don't be a scar. Don't create a scar for yourself. Be who you are. Deliver. Because subluxated allopathic chiropractors ruin the efforts demonstrating that flow, the life flows from above down and inside out. We have to live a life without fear. It's already been said in chiropractic. Fred Barge wrote a beautiful book on it. If you don't have it, get it, read it. It's beautiful. You have a sacred trust. Your service allows chiropractors to reveal an education, demonstrating that life flows from above down and inside out. It's sacred. Guard it well. Come on. There you go. So chiropractic's future is choice. There's a choice you have to make. You can forever uttering the truth of universal intelligence's relationship to every body, which is a beautiful future. Or you can live in fear and failure to utter the truth. And if we do that, we get a scar. That's a subluxated presentation. See, D.D. Palmer said chiropractic as a science defines the laws 
of life and embodies them into a system for the preservation of health. Thank you. That chiropractic has a great work to perform and that one, one that is far reaching. It begins from the conception, how long should you be under care? How long do you want to have that communication going? Forever. D.D. Palmer knew that. He said, hey, as long as the soul and the body together, from conception to death. Because chiropractic is powerful. You see, people all over the world experience results with a full illustration of universal life force flowing through them. Nothing to be afraid of. It's a beautiful thing. In the near future, he was talking wellness way back over 100 years ago. It's nothing new. In the near future, chiropractic will be valued for its preventative qualities as it is now for adjusting and relieving the cause of ailments. He said it back then. He saw, he was such a seer. Amazing, amazing that he could come up with not even know what a name is and a concept to wellness in one lifetime. Incredible. The chiropractic is an amazing thing because the body can heal itself regardless of what people's reactions are concerning their innate capabilities, right? That we have pride in our profession, perpetual recognition of innate divine existence. This is kind of long, but it's big. A man is a physical and spiritual epitome of the universe. The spiritual is the cause of action, action is life. Physical is that through which we see effects and changes, adaptation. The spiritual always did exist and always will. It is eternal, it is changeless. The physical is transient, undergoing constant change. This linking together of the spiritual and the physical makes it our duty to so keep the corporeal frame in proper alignment so the spirit may manifest itself in a natural manner. It is not only our inalienable right, but our moral duty as a chiropractor to become acquainted with the osseous and nervous makeup so that we may intelligently adjust any displaced portion of the skeletal frame so that innate, that portion of universal intelligence, usually known as spirit, because he was just starting to put the words together then, may manifest itself through and take in correct knowledge of the material world. Because he felt that as time went on, that chiropractic would raise the consciousness of the world. He was there long before, and we're just trying to still grasp what he was saying. Amazing. So your challenge is managing a tremendous truth evokes resolution. You have choices to make. You can be scared, or you can be sacred. But what you choose matters. It matters not only to you. You can help change the world one spine at a time. So chiropractic is family. New Beginnings has always been family to me. So forever and always remember, I love you because you love the things that, that I love. Thank you very much.